sleepwalking toward this crisis. This president is time to wake up. Still ahead on Scripps News Live, the U.S. inching closer to default. You know, you can't underestimate how traumatic this is, and they have a long way to go. Four women still recovering after a gunman opens fire in an Atlanta medical office. But we know right now as that suspect is now charged with murder. And a man's death on the subway now ruled a homicide. What New York City's mayor is saying about the case and any possible charges. for joining us here on Scripps News Live. Great to see you on this Thursday. Thank you for being with us. I'm Veronica Della Cruz. We begin right now overseas with Russia unleashing a barrage of missiles and drones on Ukraine's capital in the worst attack on Kyiv in a year. Now, this attack comes after Moscow accused Ukraine of a drone strike on the Kremlin overnight on Wednesday and of trying to assassinate Russian President Vladimir Putin. Kyiv is denying those accusations. Now, there's been no reports of civilian casualties in the latest assault on Kyiv or any infrastructure damage. Ukrainian officials also saying that every drone and missile was destroyed. Scripps News International correspondent Jason Bellini is live for us right now in Kyiv, Ukraine. So Jason, bring us up to speed on what exactly has happened here. What is the latest with this Russian attack? Hi there, Veronica. Well, we were able to see some of this with our own eyes right from here. People throughout Kyiv watched as anti-aircraft systems apparently took out and according to officials took out two Russian drones. And from right where I'm standing, which is near the Foreign Affairs Bureau, I was able to see anti-aircraft fire, red flares going into the sky. And then on social media, Ukraine social media lit up with video from Maidan Square, the famous Maidan Square, where people were filming in the air as a drone was shot down. And just incredible footage to watch. Now, one of these drones, according to city officials, caused a fire when it landed. Ended, but no one has been injured. There are fire crews that are on the scene. And, uh, and this is an area that's very close to downtown. It's near the train station. So the attack is really on the heart of Kyiv with these drones. And uh, we heard the air raid siren. It was about 8 o'clock local time. The sun was just setting at that hour. And that's when we were able to see those flares going through the air as the air defense system kicked into place, kicked into high gear. So we had about a 20 20-minute warning, I would say, before we actually saw the drones and heard the drones and heard the uh, anti-aircraft fire from here. And it really just goes to show that this city right now is, uh, even as spring is blooming and things se during the day seem normal here, this is a city that's been coming under attack night after night this week. And, and this, for most people, including myself, is the loudest we've ever heard it at this here in the central part of Key, Veronica. Yeah, I can only imagine how scary it must be Jason but in the mean in the meantime Ukrainian officials are saying that no civilians have been injured or killed no damage to infrastructure um, tell us more about this battle that is being fought how is Ukraine able to fend off these types of attacks well, they've got a lot of practice at it now, and the Ukrainian officials aren't saying specifically what systems they're using. I mean, this appears to be, <coughs> pardon me, anti-aircraft guns. They wouldn't use these ad more advanced systems with the very scarce and expensive munitions. Uh, we're talking about the Patriot missile system. That would be used to shoot down cruise missiles. Um, and though they've taken out cruise missiles this week, uh, they haven't said what they used to do that. They're being very circumspect about about where they're using that most advanced system. Um, but what I can tell you is that the Kyiv, they've had pretty much this week a 100% success rate. That's not been true elsewhere in the country. For example, last night, there were 15 drones that according to Ukraine's Southern Military Command, entered the Odessa area. They were able to shoot down 12 of them, uh, but two uh, managed to hit a residential building there. It was a dormitory. Fortunately, no one was killed there. And in other parts of the country, it appears that the Russians are really upping their attacks, especially uh, in Kherson, where uh, a large number of civilian casualties from attacks there. And before I let you go, Jason, I wanted to ask you how you Ukrainians have been responding to these accusations coming from Russia of this attempted assassination on their president, on Vladimir Putin. 
Well, the people here are saying it's nonsense, and now uh, the, the very respected Institute for the Study of War, we often cite them with their analysis. They say that this was a false flag attack, meaning the Russians, they did this to make it look like the Ukrainians were doing this. Again, this is according to the Institute for the Study of War. Uh, but there's great concern here that this pretext, as the Ukrainians see it, will be used for more attacks and to try to get the Russian people and, and this is what ISW says, that they're trying to get the uh, Russian authorities are trying to get the Russian people to get more behind the war and to be supportive of perhaps m call up of more troops to enter this war. I could see Veronica. that. Well, uh, we always appreciate your reporting, Jason. Please stay safe for us. Jason Bellini reporting live from Kiev. Back in the U.S. now, the debate over the debt ceiling heating up today. House Republicans are pushing a bill that would temporarily raise the nation's borrowing limit while slashing federal spending. Senate Democrats and President Biden opposing that measure. This impasse comes as the Treasury Secretary warns the U.S. could start defaulting on its debt as early as June 1st. Congressional correspondent Nathaniel Reed joining us now live from Washington where congressional leaders are set to meet next week. So Nate, Democrats have said that they are against the Republican bill. So what is happening? Why is this hearing being held right now? Well, Democrats have decided to hold these hearings, typically the way that you advance legislation, but they've decided to hold hearings on this Republican Limit Save Grow Act, which would raise the debt limit by $1.5 trillion, but also lead to some fairly severe uh, cuts in spending. Secretary, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg just told me he estimates it could be up to 22% cuts in spending next year. The reason why Democrats want to hold these hearings is to highlight just that, their opposition to these bills and lay out exactly why they're opposed to this Republican plan. Take a listen. Senate committees will continue next week showing how the Republican, the MAGA Republican default on America plan utterly, utterly reeks of MAGA Republican extremism. And it's not a plan at all. It is just a right-wing wish list thrown together in the House. The stench is foul. Default on America is loaded with poison pills that have nothing to do with averting default and everything to do with the hard right agenda. And uh, the Democrats have been fairly consistent, maintaining the fact that they want to raise the debt limit with no preconditions, no cuts. Republicans, though, have said they want there to be some level of cuts. They'll all have an opportunity to sit down next week at the White House with President Biden. And I understand, Nate, in the meantime, that Republicans are also attending these hearings. What is their message right now? Republicans have been asking President Biden to sit down with Leader McCarthy. And at this point, though we know that meeting's going to happen, Republicans are still pressing for some sort of bipartisan solution with Democrats working across the aisle with Republicans. We have divided government here in Washington. Uh, and so right now, the House is controlled by Republicans. The Senate's controlled by Democrats. And so ultimately, in order for something to pass, both parties will conceivably need to work together, something that Republicans have been pushing for. This committee ought to be embarrassed, which is the American people expect us to work on a bipartisan basis to address the challenges that America faces, rather than holding hearings that are about preening and posturing and politicizing and trying to blame the other party. It's really embarrassing. This is a committee responsible for setting a budget every year. We're supposed to have already done it. We've never even met to discuss doing that. We don't even have a budget. And Democrats, again, are pushing Republicans to agree with them, though, on raising the debt limit with no preconditions and no cuts. For Republicans, that just will not pass muster. So far, the parties uh, are still continuing to speak different languages on this. All right. Congressional correspondent Nathan Reed reporting live for us from Washington. Nate, thank you so much for the update. I want to get you now to Georgia, where after an almost eight-hour search, the suspect accused of shooting five people, killing one in Midtown, has been arrested. 24-year-old Dion Patterson now charged with one count of murder, four counts of aggravated assault. Police say he opened fire in the waiting room of an Atlanta medical practice Wednesday. Now today, Patterson waived his first court appearance. Scripps News correspondent Alexa Liaco just outside of Grady Hospital right now, where four of those victims are being treated. She joins us now Live. So, Alexa, uh, give us an update. How are these women doing right now? 
Well, Veronica, these women are, are still really in the midst of fighting for their lives right now. Uh, we do know that one of the four women who was shot in that waiting room in that medical office is in stable condition. The other three are in the ICU right now. Two of the three women who are in the ICU um, have had to go back in to get secondary surgeries today. Um, doctors do say, though, that that's usually normal when something like this happens with as catastrophic of wounds as these women had. Um, and they, they do hope that these women can pull through. But again, two of the, of the three that are in ICU still in surgery today. And what can, what can you tell us about the suspect in this case? Because I understand that his mother accompanied her son to the medical office. And I also understand that she had spoken with the Associated Press and said that he was having issues with mental instability. What does this mean exactly? Do we know anything about the health condition that he was suffering? Well, we're starting to learn a little bit more about his background. We know that he was in the U.S. Coast Guard um, beginning in 2018 and in January of this year left the Coast Guard, but they have not given us um, an explanation or reason as to why he left the service. Um, we do know that he was with his mother um, at that appointment seeking um, a, a drug for Ativan, a common medication for anxiety and depression. Um, his mother has said that he was not able to get that drug from the VA um, and that her son was having a rough time not having the medication that they would like. Uh, the VA has said that um, they can't discuss his case specifically, but the mom told, uh, told news outlets that um, they were told that the son was rejected for that drug because it was, quote, too addicting. Um, but it seems here like he was trying to seek help um, and somehow there was some sort of disagreement in that waiting room um, where he was not able to get that medication and then um, the, the shooting started. All right, so essentially he was trying to get medication that he said he needed. Um, do we know anything about the gun that he supposedly had? Because he couldn't get medication, but he could get a gun. Do we know anything about the gun and, and where it came from? At this point, we're, we're reading from affidavits that it was a semi-automatic handgun. He obviously walked into the medical building with his mom uh, for an appointment, so he was not you know, able to conceal a larger weapon. Um, and from surveillance photos as well, you can see um, the outline of a handgun-sized weapon. Um, but police and police originally did not recover that handgun in their search. Um, it's not clear yet if they have recovered that gun um, when they arrested Patterson yesterday evening. Finally, Alexa, he said that you were saying that he waived his court appearance today. So where does that leave this investigation? What happens next? So he waived that appearance today. He is facing one count of murder, four counts of aggravated uh, assault here, um, and they have not set his next court date yet. But yesterday when we were out there um, on the scene, the mayor came and spoke with media. Um, and last night, once they had um, taken him into custody, the mayor said that he looks forward to seeing justice in this case, and he plans to make sure that Patterson um, faces the, the full scope of the justice system and really is, you know, ready to take him to trial for, for what happened yesterday. Alexa Lianco with the latest outside of Grady Hospital in Atlanta. Alexa, we appreciate it. Thank you. So what technology can law enforcement use to track down suspects, and is it working to reduce crime? Jamal Andrews explains how license plate readers are giving officers a boost. We have that full report for you straight ahead at 5 p.m. Eastern. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, Vice President Kamala Harris meeting with tech leaders today over artificial intelligence, why the Biden administration is so concerned about AI and what they're planning to do about it. Also, Buckingham Palace preparing to take the world stage once again. The final touches on King Charles' coronation. That's next. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. 
right now. Get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. If I had to replace my engine, the bill would have been over four grand. But my Endurance Auto Protection Plan covered it all. A broken AC unit costs over $1,800. A transmission, over $3,000. And an engine, over $4,000. Breakdowns used to mean paying thousands out of pocket until now. Go to EnduranceWarranty.com or call Endurance today and stop paying for expensive auto repairs. Call 877-204-1467 or visit EnduranceWarranty.com for a free quote. Attention firefighters, first responders, military base personnel, and airport workers. Listen closely to this important legal announcement. Have you been exposed to chemical-based firefighting foam? If so, you may be entitled to a substantial cash award without going to court. For decades, aqueous film forming foam, or AFFF, has been used to extinguish liquid fuel fires. A scientific study has now shown that the chemicals used to make AFFF are highly toxic to humans and can cause a significant risk of developing several types of cancer including kidney, pancreatic, thyroid, prostate, bladder, testicular, liver, or non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. If you or a loved one are a firefighter, first responder, airport worker, or member of the military that has used firefighting foam and has been diagnosed with cancer, please call the Negligence Network to file your claim today. There's no fee unless we win your case. Call the Negligence Network to see if you're eligible for substantial compensation. Call 1-800-300-4858. That's 1-800-300-4858. Local, national, and worldwide headlines. Breaking down the day's biggest stories with live reporting from around the globe. I'm Del Walters, and this is your Evening Debrief. Live tonight, starting at 6, 5 central, only on Scripps News. Why is where curiosity is intentional. Because when you ask the why behind the news, the world opens up before your eyes. The Why, Saturday nights at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. England will celebrate King Charles III's coronation this weekend, nearly nine months after his mother, Queen Elizabeth II, passed away. Buckingham Palace announcing earlier this week more than 2,200 people are going to be attending the historic event. Correspondent Julie Chapman is in the midst of all the excitement, and she has the details. There's a festive atmosphere already in the capital as it prepares for this major event, which hasn't happened for seven decades. There are British flags and banners on the streets of London, as well as security barriers for what will be an enormous security operation. King Charles and his wife, the Queen, uh, will be taking part in this ceremony on Saturday, which will last for just under two hours. King Charles will take an oath. He'll be anointed. He'll wear the crown for what will only be uh, be the only time in his reign uh, and he will also sit on the throne as part of this ceremony uh, really making it official that he is the new king of this country uh, there will be a number of music uh, pieces played throughout the event and then the king and queen will carry out a procession back to Buckingham Palace where members of the public will be able to cheer them on from the sides of the road and then on the balcony at the palace they will be watching a fly past which will bring an end to the official ceremonies, but there will be celebrations around the country over the course of this three-day weekend. And that has also contributed to security concerns. There is a big police operation planned for Saturday to make sure that members of the public and indeed the royal family themselves remain safe. There will be sniffer dogs at transport hubs, 11,000 police officers involved, helicopters providing aircraft, and what will be the single biggest operation of live facial recognition software use uh, in the UK. So a really big operation, but one that will be uh, celebrated for this major event in British history. Julia Chapman for Scripps News, London. So lots of security, lots of preparations indeed ahead of the coronation taking place on Saturday. Here to talk more about the significance of the event and what exactly happens is Richard Fitzwilliams. He is a royal commentator. He joins us now live from London. Richard, thank you so much for being with us. 
the pleasure, and it is a historic event, as you've heard. Britain has had coronations since 973 AD, when King Edgar was crowned, and there's no question on this occasion, 70 years since the last 1953, an iconic occasion uh, when Queen Elizabeth, age 27, was crowned from what people then saw was the beginning of a new Elizabethan age, and this actually, the ceremony was magnificent, and it launched television. This is very different, uh, as was mentioned, 2,000 guests down from 8,000, and at a time of uh, cost of living crisis, there have been cuts in the scale of it. On the other hand, more police, it was very different in 1953, and also the route back after the ceremony uh, is only about a quarter as long. This is a more diverse burst ceremony uh, which reflects contemporary Britain much better and but the core of it the religious ritual remains the same so Richard you were just saying that they they whittle that guest list down from more than 8,000 people to only 2,000 so so who is attending is it just lots of big names are you going to be going would that I were. I wish I could say yes to that but when in fact uh, the Queen one of the Queen's former um, the maids of honour, uh, Lord Mark Batten's daughter, Lady Pamela Hicks, didn't get an invitation. Most of the dukes who played quite a role in the 1953 coronation, and they were all there, the peers and so forth, it was very centred around the aristocracy. Most of them haven't had an invitation, alas not. Now, what the emphasis is, firstly, King Charles is very keen that this should be an event that people could, in a sense, relate to for hundreds, several hundred members of those who won the British Empire medal. They served the community, but also there's a soft power element to this because this is the way Britain uses its monarchy and needs to post-Brexit. And so every country Britain has diplomatic relations with, bar a certain number, uh, Nicaragua, Russia, Belarus, uh, and so forth, uh, will send representatives. Also, the Commonwealth will be represented, of course, and naturally, King Charles when Prince of Wales said he wished to be defender of faith, not the faith, as head of the church, supreme governor of the Church of England. So there will be other faith leaders there, and he will interact with them. All right, so lots of world leaders, faith leaders, like you were just saying, and this hasn't happened for 70 years, so obviously it is a very, very big deal. Uh, but I wanted to ask you about growing criticism in recent years from those across the pond who think that maybe the idea of a monarchy is archaic and it may not be good for the country any longer. Uh, what are your thoughts? Are there negative sentiments towards the new king? Um, have you heard of anything around maybe protests that are being planned? Yes, indeed. The, um, it's a fringe organization called Republic, and it is planning what I would say. It may attract a few hundred people. Uh, it's, uh, it always has regarded the fact that once Queen Elizabeth had died, <sighs> King Charles and Queen Camilla are in their 70s, obviously. He's the longest serving Prince of Wales in history, and the Prince's Trust helped a million disadvantaged young people. His son has achieved a lot. But equally, he has been controversial in certain areas, and there's no question that they feel now is the time to push for a republic. But although some polls have shown young people between the, 18, the age of 18 and 24, this is the challenge for the monarch, um, are disillusioned, uh, the vast majority of British people still want to keep a monarchy as a symbol of national unity above party politics. It's ideal. It promotes soft power. You've got this amazing link with the Commonwealth. Well, no, it's not automatic. The monarch is at its head. And it's not just issues such as tourism which are important. It's the soft power issue trips abroad and so forth help British business and these extraordinary pageants, the Jubilees, royal weddings and so forth, the international attention is absolutely extraordinary. It's the most high profile institution in the world, I'd suggest, together with the White House and the American presidency. It is extraordinary so, and most people would wish to keep it and that's overwhelming in the polls, but it is less than it was, so clearly the king has a lot to do to keep it relevant. All right. Well, we will all be watching, as will many others around the world. Richard Fitzwilliams, royal commentator from London, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you.
Let's turn out on Scripps News Live. Vice President Kamala Harris hosting tech leaders to talk artificial intelligence. The action is at the White House wants to see take place right now. But first, protesters calling for action after a New York man dies in a chokehold. The reaction from the city's mayor and what comes next in the case. You're looking pretty good, Mr. Johnson, but we need to take some x-rays today. That's why. Yes, x-rays are expensive, but the front desk said you recently enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan with extra benefits that now cover today's x-rays and cleaning costs. Well, I'm okay. Well, Medicare Parts A and B do not cover your routine dental coverage like cleanings, fillings, or x-rays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, you have a Medicare Part C plan commonly called Medicare Advantage. Medicare Part C plans cover everything in Part A and Part B, plus extra benefits like dental, vision, and hearing. Wow, that's great that my plan includes dental coverage that helps pay for these costs. Yes, Mr. Johnson. A Medicare Part C plan could include dental coverage that pays for routine dental exams and teeth cleanings, dental x-rays, fillings, tooth extractions, root canals, dentures, implants, and crowns. If you're losing coverage, moving, or new to Medicare, call to speak with a licensed insurance agent. You don't get a plan with these benefits automatically, so it's always good to call to see if there's a plan with extra benefits available in your zip code. If you don't have a Medicare Part C plan, call now because there may be plans available with additional benefits that are simply not covered under Medicare Parts A and B, like routine dental coverage. In fact, 24 million Medicare beneficiaries do not have any dental coverage. Here's the good news. If you're on Medicare, you can call even if you called last year. We will check to see if there is a Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. Remember, you don't get Medicare Part C benefits automatically. So call now for your free 2023 no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Just call 800-614-5203. 800-614-5203. At Omaha Steaks, we do burgers differently. We take a premium aged steak like this and turn it into a pure ground burger like this. So this is actually a ribeye. This is a New York strip, top sirloin, beef brisket, and this, this is a filet mignon. For a limited time, our burger perfection flight comes with 20 big juicy burgers, all for just $79.99, plus free shipping. Get it today at omahasteaks.com slash TV. This is burger perfection guaranteed. Make your gift personal this Mother's Day with custom glass prints show love. Images are printed directly on glass in brilliant color and clarity. Turn your memories with mom into remarkably different prints. Go to trifracture.com and get 30% off orders over $50. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then Worthy sent Lila her money. You're worthy of more. Get started at worthy.com. Chris News Live. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. It's nearly half past the hour now. Here are some of the headlines that we're tracking for you. Four former members of the Proud Boys, including leader Enrique Terrio, now convicted of seditious conspiracy. A jury in Washington, D.C. heard dozens of witness accounts from the January 6th attack. The charge carries a prison sentence of up to 20 years. Attorneys General in New York and California investigating allegations of workplace discrimination in the NFL. The two officials say that they have issued subpoenas to NFL executives looking for information on allegations of harassment, gender pay disparities, and gender and racial discrimination. And the number of people filing jobless claims for the first time rose last week. The Labor Department says it jumped up by 13,000 from the week before. Economists say the gains were a little more than expected, and it could be an indicator that the labor market is now softening. Well, New York City's medical examiner says a homeless man who died on the subway Monday was choked to death. And we do want to warn you that the footage we're about to show may be disturbing. Now, the video taken by a passenger as 30-year-old Jordan Neely lay on the floor of the subway. Police say that Neely was yelling at people when a rider put him in a chokehold for several minutes until his body went limp. Other passengers were also pinning him down. 
The 24-year-old man who held Neely in a headlock was taken into custody but then re later released without charges. We want to get you live now to New York City where national political correspondent Alex Miller has been standing by. Alex, what more can you tell us about this man, about Jordan Neely, and what exactly happened on Monday? Well, he was a 30-year-old Michael Jackson impersonator who was traveling on the F train uh, Monday afternoon. At some point, uh, this incident occurred. Now, according to what witnesses told NBC New York, he was acting erratically. He said that he wanted food and that he would hurt people in order to do it. Now, there was also a freelance journalist on the train, the one who took the video. He told the New York Post that Neely was acting in an aggressive manner, but still, uh, the video clip that we have thus far is still not a whole lot does not show uh, the incident and what led up to the incident it only shows really the clip of Neely being placed in a chokehold and uh, eventually going unconscious now Alex New York officials were ratcheting up police presence on subways because there was this increase in transit mm -hmm. crime what do we know about officers at the time of this incident were there any on hand there were not any on hand, and that is actually an incredibly interesting tidbit and likely going to be a big part of this story. According to witnesses, this took roughly 15 minutes for police to respond. And like you said, there's been an increased presence on platforms, on subways. I ride the subway nearly every single day. You typically see officers there, and that is because of this NYPD initiative. After we saw uh, a subway shooting last year, after we saw lots of crime, including people being pushed in front of these subway cars. So the fact not only only that they were not there but not close by is definitely something that I'm sure will likely be taken into account by investigators. So Alex, people have been pretty outspoken in response to what's happened here. What is the sense you're getting right now from the general public? What are they saying? You know, Veronica, it's mixed in part because there has been this crime on subways. Something that the mayor has been touting is that subway crime has actually been down since the increased police presence. Obviously, this incident is one that sticks out. But when you go on the subways, people are definitely a little bit more vigilant, paying attention to their surroundings, whether they're standing on the track or in the car or in the subway cars themselves. But obviously, people shocked at this situation, outraged by it. There was a protest on the platform this happened on look this happened on a subway car but the doors were eventually opened at the platform when EMS was able to arrive when police were able to arrive that was actually that happened on a subway platform it wasn't uh, in between two separate stations so there was a protest that occurred there yesterday afternoon the district attorney now says that they are investigating uh, they say they're going to review the autopsy which was determined to be a homicide by the medical examiner and they also uh, said that they are going to assess all available video and photo footage identify and interview as many witnesses as possible and obtain medical records but obviously across the spectrum condemnation uh, for many at least on the left uh, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez called this a murder in light of the medical examiner deeming this a homicide uh, Mayor Eric Adams also a Democrat but also a former police officer said that was irresponsible he wants to see how this investigation unfolds listen when I was a former transit police officer, and I responded to many jobs where you had a passenger assist someone, and so we cannot just blankly say, blankly say what a passenger should or should not do in a situation like that. We should allow the investigation to take its course. And Veronica, that man that did that put uh, Neely into a chokehold was briefly taken into custody before being released. There were also two other men, one uh, that was helping pin him down, another one that kind of hovering above him. Uh, there have been no charges filed yet against any of them. But again, uh, according to the, to the district attorney, this is an ongoing investigation. All right. One that we're going to be watching closely. Alex Miller, live for us in New York City. Alex, thank you. I want to get you out of Washington, where Vice President Kamala Harris was meeting today with the leaders of tech companies rapidly developing AI. The heads of Microsoft, Google, OpenAI, and Anthropic all expected to discuss artificial intelligence risks with Harris. Now, this meeting comes ahead of the Biden administration's plans to issue guidance on artificial intelligence over the next few months. The message to developers right now. Well, they have a responsibility in reducing anticipated risks and working with the government. White House correspondent Haley Bull joins us now live with more on what the administration is planning. Haley, what happened in today's meeting? 
Good afternoon, Veronica. Well, the White House is really honing in on the safety aspect of artificial intelligence in this meeting. And it's really part of the larger effort from the White House to delineate how it approaches this technology as they work to balance the benefits of the rapidly developing technology with the risks it also pose. So today they announced new investments to add seven national AI research institutes, commitments from companies for a public evaluation of the systems and that they will release a draft policy on how the government uses AI over the summer. Uh, now, this was a high-level meeting that the vice president hosted with senior administration officials and, as you mentioned, CEOs from Anthropic, Alphabet, Microsoft, and OpenAI, which is the company that developed ChatGPT. We also know President Biden dropped in on this meeting, the White House, saying that this is an important issue for him. The vice president stated following the meeting, I want to read part of this for you here, quote, that the private sector has an ethical, moral, and legal responsibility to ensure the safety and security of their products, and every company must comply with existing laws to protect the American people. Now, this comes amid outside concerns about the speed of development in this tech sector and the ethics with it. Uh, the White House today recognizing the potential in the technology, but also threats that they view to safety, civil rights, and privacy. Uh, they view this as building on their efforts here regarding AI. They describe this meeting today as an honest and frank conversation. Listen. It, it was a frank conversation. It was an honest, frank conversation, uh, which included discussion on a couple of things. Three main things uh, is the need for companies to be more transparent with policymakers, the public and others uh, about uh, their AI systems in, in particular, the importance of being able to evaluate, verify, and validate the safety, security, and, uh, and, uh, and the efficacy of AI systems, and the need to ensure AI systems are secure um, from ma uh, malicious actors and attacks, as you were just stating, uh, Justin. Look, uh, we have uh, led on these issues uh, since long uh, before these newest generation, uh, gener generative, I should say, AI products, and we'll continue to do so. And we know the White House is planning to continue these conversations, but certainly, Veronica, this is an issue uh, we haven't heard the last of, just really getting started on this. All right, Haley Bull live for us there at the White House. Haley, thank you so much. So to come on Scripps News Live, another legal blow for President Trump. The latest decision on his lawsuit against the New York Times and his own niece. Contentious showdown on a state house floor, mirroring tensions across the nation. Scripps News is sitting down with Representative Zoe Zephyr and House Speaker Matt Regeer. Tonight at 9.30, 8.30 Central, only on Scripps News. Are you ready for a fresh new bath or shower? Well, now is the best time with free installation and no interest and no payments for one year. Hi, I'm Christina, and it's time to flip your old worn out bath or shower with Jacuzzi Bath Remodel today. Everyone knows the Jacuzzi brand. They're the most trusted name in water for over 60 years. But did you know they can install a gorgeous bath or shower that feels incredible in as little as one day? It's no stress and no mess with a lifetime warranty. Now let's talk beauty. You deserve to start and end your day in a beautiful space that feels great and is custom designed just for you. So call or go online now to see the Christina preferred designs like Canyon, Farm, and Urban. Now that's the total bathroom beauty that I love at a price you can afford. And how about safety? Like an ultra low profile, easy entry shower complete with grab bars and a custom design seat. You deserve safety and peace of mind without sacrificing style. Because with all the worries in daily life, taking a shower shouldn't be one of them. Every time I stepped over my old tub, I worried I might fall. I don't have those fears anymore. Jacuzzi Bath Remodel gave me a gorgeous shower that's safe too. I've been trying to get him to remodel that bath for years. I called and they didn't just one day. And at a price we could afford. With one call to Jacuzzi Bath Remodel, you can effortlessly transform that old, ugly eyesore into the stunning bath or shower of your dreams that you'll love for years to come. Call or go online now to jacuzzibathremodel.com to get free installation. Plus, ask how you may qualify for no interest and no payments for one year. Go to jacuzzibathremodel.com or call 800-218-1279. That's 800-218-1279. Call now.
This is an important legal announcement for all firefighters, first responders, airport workers, members of the military, and their families. Firefighter occupational cancer is the leading cause of deaths in the fire service. Cancer accounted for more than 74% of deaths in 2022. You may have been exposed to chemical-based firefighting foam known to cause cancer. If you or a loved one were exposed, you may be entitled to significant cash compensation. Call the number on your screen now for your free case consultation. Aqueous Film Forming Foam, or AFF, has been used to extinguish fires for years. Studies now show there are highly toxic chemicals used to make this foam. These chemicals can cause many types of cancer and illnesses. Call now to see if you're eligible for the cash compensation you deserve without having to go to court. The call and consultation are absolutely free. The time to file your claim is limited, so don't wait and call now. Just call 800-346-7670 now. That's 800 346 7670. Sure, you'll teach her how to drive a car. Then use green light to power her independence with crash detection with 911 dispatch, family location sharing, and emergency SOS alerts. Invest in your best investment with green light. This is the upside, where we shine a light on the brighter side of news. With this is my purpose. Anybody can do it. These are the stories of good people doing great things. Weekday mornings at 5.30, 4.30 Central on Scripps News. A judge has dismissed former President Trump's lawsuit against the New York Times. Trump sued both the Times and his niece Mary in 2021 for the paper's Pulitzer Prize winning report on his tax records, alleging the two parties plotted to get and publish, quote, highly sensitive records. A state Supreme Court judge in New York has now tossed the lawsuit out against the Times, saying it fails, quote, as a matter of constitutional law, and he's ordered Trump to pay the Times legal fees. The judge has not yet ruled on the former president's lawsuit against his niece, Mary Trump. So earlier today, Vice President Kamala Harris met with top tech leaders talking about the challenges of artificial intelligence. Joining me now to take a closer look at AI and some of the concerns is Chris Hammond. He is the director of the Center for Advancing Safety of Machine Intelligence at Northwestern University. Chris, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thanks for having me. So, Chris, moments ago, we were listening in on our White House correspondent, Haley Bull, and what she had to say about the vice president meeting today with tech leaders, reviewing the risks of artificial intelligence development. What do you make of the administration's plan so far, and how involved do you think the government needs to be? Um, I think uh, to date, uh, to date uh, the White House has actually done a really nice job. I mean, they put out a bill of rights. Uh, for AI users um, a few months ago uh, that was, I think, focused on the most important thing. It was, not, it was not so much abstract notions of ethics or responsibility, but it was focused on safety. And the notion that when we build systems, we need to actually consider, are they going to be safe for the people who are using them? Are they going to be safe for the groups, uh, the uh, people who they're going to impact? Are they going to be safe for society? Uh, and that actually has been the, the, the focus today. Um, uh, the fact that they're getting together now, we'll see what comes of it. But they're talking to, I think, the, mostly the right people. That is, uh, certainly the companies. But they should also be you know, you know, bringing in uh, uh, people who live in uh, the world of safety culture to begin with. Uh, and, uh, and use those uh, areas where we've learned how to be safe. as the um, I, um, Use those areas as drivers for figuring out what to do with AI. Well, let's talk about some of the risks involved with AI because Jeffrey Hinton is a cognitive psychologist and computer scientist, and he's known as the godfather of AI. Now, he recently resigned from Google. He was there for 10 years, and he did so because he says that he wanted to go public with the dangers of artificial intelligence. Take a listen to what he has had to say. There's lots of known dangers, like um, manipulating electorates and putting people out of work. Um, but that's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is the existential threat that these things will get to be much smarter than us and will take over, they'll take control. And I've started worrying about that recently because I recently came to the conclusion that the kind of digital intelligence that's being developed for these chatbots is very different from the kind of biological intelligence we have. So he says they're going to become much smarter than us and they are going to take control. He does go on to say, they could figure out how to manipulate us. 
they could potentially kill us. What is your reaction to all of that? I, I think that uh, my reaction really comes from his very first sentence. There are known problems, uh, but I don't want to talk about those. But there are known problems. There are known problems with AI having to do with bias, um, um, systems that use dark patterns to uh, get people addicted online, uh, uh, interactions that cause massive depression. And that's what we should be looking at right now. Um, I feel like worrying about the existential threat is like, uh, is like talking to a friend of yours at a bar um, who's really drunk and wants to drive home. You don't really want to talk to them about the ill effects of alcohol on their liver or long-term addiction. You want to get their keys. And right now we're in a situation where we know enough about the places where there are harms, uh, having to do with bias, having to do with, with in, you know, existing manipulation of human decision making, where we can actually protect people from those harms. We know what to do. And the notion that we'll be distracted by worrying about an existential threat uh, based upon a super intelligent AI is, I think, a bit misguided. But I do want to talk about some of the concerns that world leaders, government leaders have right now. The World Economic Forum releasing a report that predicted that AI is going to create this massive disruption in the global workforce over the next five years. Uh, right now, there are writers, television writers, film writers that are striking, who are voicing their concerns about artificial intelligence. Take a listen to what this writer, who is currently on strike, had to say. You know, AI, all of these different advances in technology, it's coming for everyone. It's coming for everyone in every part of the industry. And while it is wonderful that we have advances in technology, they cannot and should not replace actual humans who are creating art. And so the fact that they would not even, they wouldn't even address AI at all, um, it's disheartening and it cannot stand. Now, I've used AI. I've seen how quickly ChatGPT can cobble together a newscast. Uh, other reports say that clerical administrative jobs could also be at risk. Truck drivers. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. I mean, how worried should we be right now? We should not be worried, but we should be aware. And I think that I understand the concern about uh, the, uh, the language models and chat GPT and uh, people's response to it. Uh, but really understand that that technology is, from my perspective, is a partnership technology. We can make that technology do absolutely magnificent things, but only in partnership with us and what we ask for and how we interact with it. Um, and there's a very real, um, I think there's a very real misunderstanding of that technology in particular. Um, and, uh, and that really comes down to uh, realizing it's not so much an intelligent thing by itself. It's a fluency engine. It's really good at talking. It's really good at, at language, um, but it doesn't know what to say. And if we decide that what we're going to do is we're going to partner with this technology and become better and better and better at expressing ourselves with it, then that's a huge win. And there will be disruption. There's not even a question about it. Uh, but this is a place where we can do better with the technology than without the technology. And the technology can do nothing without us. And that's well, the beauty of it. I got to let you go. But yes or no, will it become smarter than we will, than we are? God, I hope so. Uh, I, I really do. I, because I think uh, having a, a Having a smart system that is smarter than we are can, and is partnering with us and helping us, um, uh, that could actually free us from a lot, of, uh, a lot of the things we don't want to be involved with. And we can spend more time doing what we're supposed to do as human beings, and that is interact with each other and be kind to each other um, and uh, live in a realm of emotion and creativity. All right, Chris Hammond, thank you so much for stopping by today. We definitely appreciate your perspective on this one. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, tiny tree is standing tall in one man's backyard garden. We're going to explore the history and benefits of bonsais. That's next. You're looking pretty good, Mr. Johnson, but we need to take some x-rays today. That's why. Yes, x-rays are expensive, but 
The front desk said you recently enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan with extra benefits that now cover today's x-rays and cleaning costs. Wow, okay. Well, Medicare Parts A and B do not cover your routine dental coverage like cleanings, fillings, or x-rays. <laughs> yes, you have a Medicare Part C plan, commonly called Medicare Advantage. Medicare Part C plans cover everything in Part A and Part B, plus extra benefits like dental, vision, and hearing. Wow, that's great that my plan includes dental coverage that helps pay for these costs. Yes, Mr. Johnson. A Medicare Part C plan could include dental coverage that pays for routine dental exams and teeth cleanings, dental x-rays, fillings, tooth extractions, root canals, dentures, implants, and crowns. If you're losing coverage, moving, or new to Medicare, call to speak with a licensed insurance agent. You don't get a plan with these benefits automatically, so it's always good to call to see if there's a plan with extra benefits available in your zip code. If you don't have a Medicare Part C plan, call now because there may be plans available with additional benefits that are simply not covered under Medicare Parts A and B, like routine dental coverage. In fact, 24 million Medicare beneficiaries do not have any dental coverage. Here's the good news. If you're on Medicare, you can call even if you called last year. We will check to see if there is a Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. Remember, you don't get Medicare Part C benefits automatically. So call now for your free 2023 no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Just call 800-614-5203. 800-614-5203. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned, too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average, and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. of us these days searching for a tiny piece of zen and some people are finding it in these bonsai trees national correspondent chris conti explains why do you ever feel like life is moving in a lot of different directions loud chaotic filled with a lot of anxiety and stress which is part of the reason why so many americans are now turning to the ancient art of bonsai in search of peace and tranquility. But it is kind of a, you know, a little bit of a sanctuary. Precision for Jim Sullivan is one of life's constants. You know, I'm still, still learning, still trying. Sullivan began his career as a mechanical engineer at the National Institutes of Health in the 1970s. His job has come with plenty of anxiety. And if you've ever been a supervisor, that in itself is stressful. <laughs> Looking for an outlet to get away from it all, Jim Sullivan grew into a new hobby, bonsai. Bonsai was a way, a way to relax. Jim spends most of his free time meticulously caring for the numerous bonsai trees he's collected over the years. Someone would think 150 bonsai is a sign of insanity. Others would think, well, that's a pretty good start. Care for these miniature landscapes requires precise attention to detail which often mimics life. There's an aging process. If the tree's well grown and you're lucky, it will outlive you and probably outlive your grandchildren. But it's, it's a process of life. It turns out Jim Sullivan, though, isn't alone in his love for this ancient art rooted in Japanese culture. That branch is bent to the desired position. Bonsai is the art of growing ornamental, artificially dwarfed trees or shrubs. And lately, there's been a lot of green in the bonsai market not just in these leaves. In 2019, the bonsai market size was $5 billion. By 2026, that number will be closer to $8 billion. You can devote as much time or as little time as, 
as you want to. Much of the growth is from Americans looking for new ways to relax. Is this a nice day for them? Is this too cold, too hot? What's the... Today's weather is great. I wanted to learn more about how Bonsai came to America, which led me here. This is the National Bonsai and Penjing Museum in Washington. And this trident maple is very vigorous. Michael James is the curator. So decisions have to be made for the health of the tree. His work here never ends. He's always pruning these trees to be perfectly balanced and small. The size of the leaves oftentimes tell the vigor of the tree. Bonsai didn't reach North America until after World War II. This tree is 400 years old and was gifted to the U.S. by Japan. It has quite the story to tell. In 1945, it was in the city of Hiroshima when it was bombed. It's that resilience that many people identify with in Bonsai, especially recently. Our numbers of visitors have skyrocketed since the pandemic. They certainly speak to uh, timelessness and uh, how much patience and dedication. There's another reason behind Bonsai's growing popularity. Studies have shown gardening can often have a positive impact on mood and brain chemistry. Plants and, and gardening can be therapeutic. The, the repetition, the, the, the calisthenics, you know, the exercise. Not unlike, you know, finding balance in life. Many people see trees as like, the, or the care or the, the care of a bonsai as a metaphor to life. According to the American Bonsai Society, there are now more than 220 bonsai clubs in nearly every U.S. state, including Alaska and Hawaii. Definitely, I've learned a lot. And at this one in Baltimore, where we found Jim Sullivan recently. Yeah, and it's all opposite branching. He comes here once a month. I don't know about you, but my ponderosas really loved this past winter. Members lean on one another for expertise. I'm glad you could make it. I'm Charlie, by the way. Hi, Charlie. And sometimes just for company. It satisfies your need to do, do some art and certainly relaxation. That is not to say there is not some level of stress involved in the care of bonsai. The first couple I got, I ended up killing. The devil is in the details in bonsai. Most bonsais may not live to be 400 years old, but these tiny trees are proving the timelessness of tranquility in nature. Chris Conti, Scripps News, Washington. Is this at the end? Four members of the Proud Boys will pay their participation in the January 6th riots. We're going to have the details on the jury's decision after this. The news continues right here on Scripps News with Del Walters. We'll be right back.